Yes, thank you very much, Sean. Once again, a very warm welcome to all of our attendees this morning. And Sean, we love listening to you on a Tuesday morning, so thank you very much for everything that you do. So this morning, we just want to remind everybody about the uh, month of April 2020. It is still Legionnaires Awareness Month. Uh, so next month, obviously, the four weeks that are in that month, or the full toolbox talks that we will be discussing about Legionella, what it is, how does it spread, and how can it be prevented. So we are going to be uh, sending out this information uh, perhaps ahead of time uh, just to help some of them uh, or some of you out there to prepare yourself uh, for what's coming or what's lying ahead. And that is why we have a topic for today on lockdown. Now we know we are changing the toolbox talks as and when uh, things arise, but I think it's a good thing to discuss it, especially with the next two days. Um, what are we going to do today, tomorrow, as well as Thursday before the lockdown? What are you going to do to prepare yourself for the 21 days of lockdown? So let us take a look at just a couple of things. And then what we want to encourage all of you in the audience, please, to do is think about some of the things that you are already doing. Uh, perhaps you've thought about it now during the toolbox talk, uh, or perhaps even during the rest of the week, you can give us some information for next week's toolbox talk. So we are changing this week's toolbox talk as well as next week's toolbox talk on just basically giving us some information on what to do uh, during the current crisis that we are facing. Now, as we know, South Africa will be locked down from midnight on March the 26th until midnight April the 16th. So this 21-day lockdown, obviously coming from Soro Ramaphosa, uh, is basically ensuring that people do not gather together, are isolated from each other, so that the spread of the coronavirus can be halted. Now, we know that essential personnel are still going to be working. So what do you need to know about the coming weeks? For one, all shops and businesses will be closed, except for pharmacies, laboratories, banks, essential financial and payment services, including the JSE, and then a few supermarkets, petrol stations, and healthcare providers. Now, when they say this, um, it's not that every single pharmacy, every single supermarket, or every single petrol station might be open. It is also up to the individual owner. So what we are trying to say here is, although this is the case, why not find out, and we, we will mention this a little bit later in the Toolbox Talk, find out, make a list of those around you, those essential services around you that will be open so that you know now for when the lockdown arrives. So there are some exempted persons, persons who are still going to be working. Those are the health workers, security services, or any other persons necessary for the response to the pandemic, as well as those involved in the production, distribution, and supply of food and basic goods. So we just want to stop right here and say, if you are in this industry, or if you are one of those exempted persons that will still be working to keep our country going, we just want to say thank you very much uh, on behalf of ourselves. Uh, we just really appreciate what you are going to do and the effort that you are going to take in the next coming weeks, continuing to maintain the country around us. We also look at essential banking services. Again, when it says essential, it may only be a few that will be opened. Uh, the maintenance of power, water, uh, as well as telecommunication services, laboratory services, and the provision of medical and hygiene products. So as we mentioned, it is coming on midnight, March 26th, that is this Thursday, and we only have a few days left. Now, individuals will not be allowed to leave their homes. We know this because only under strict controlled circumstances, as perhaps going to seek for medical care, uh, buy food, buy medicine or other supplies, or even collect a social grant, they will still be monitoring. And you've probably seen it going around uh, social media, how the entire government is now rallying together uh, with the army, with SAP, and they are putting stations in place in each province to ensure that people abide by this law. So 
What about those who do not have homes? Well, the government has said that they will be providing shelters with uh, necessary hygiene standards uh, for homeless people. Let's hope that this is the spark that we need to get those people homes as well as to keep permanent homes for them after the 21-day period. We can only hope for things like this, especially those who cannot self-isolate at home. We truly, our hearts go out for them because it is difficult, especially at a time like this when the world is in a crisis. Now, essential transport services will continue, especially for those essential staff that are going to be going around to laboratory services, um, food supply chains, distributions, or those who are involved in keeping the country running during this time. But again, it is only for essential staff, so we do need to remember that. Non-South Africans who are arriving on flights, obviously from high-risk countries, have been identified uh, even from a week ago, and these have been turned away. No international flights will be going out. These are temporarily suspended. And obviously, all international travelers who arrived in SA after the 9th of March from high-risk countries will be quarantined for 14 days first, and then perhaps returned home, or depending on the situation, the quarantine may continue for them, perhaps even for the full length of the 21 days that we are currently seeing. So what are we going to do? As South Africans, we realize that this may have been coming. It might have caught us a little bit off guard. But will you be prepared? And really, this is a form of an emergency. And in occupational health and safety, in toolbox talks, in plumbing, uh, in any industry, we understand what emergency or disaster means. So as we face an uncertain near future, all of us, and I'm sure I'm speaking for every single person listening today, you are probably concerned over the repercussions of this pandemic. So yes, the current situation is difficult. The next 21 days may be even more difficult. But what about the days, weeks, and months following? Yes, the repercussions of something like this can be far more dire than the actual situation itself. So let us take a look. Uh, in this toolbox talk, we, we cannot touch on a lot. We only have a, a little bit of information. But since we're all at home, and for the next few uh, weeks, we're going to be stuck at home, it will mean that we have more time uh, to be able to interact with you. So if you have that time, we would love to hear from you. So please uh, make sure that you reach out to us either on the WhatsApp number or on the email addresses and give us some of your suggestions. And we'll take a look at these four suggestions in the next few days leading up to lockdown, as well as some great ideas for the 21-day period while we are in full isolation. So what we want to just remind you is be realistic, be prepared, be generous, and be positive. So how do we go about doing this, especially in the next few days? Well, panic buying can disrupt the supply of food and essential items needed for the community. So we are asking you to please be wise and selective about what you need and how much you need, as well as trying to put the urge of stockpiling aside. Now, why is this so important? Well, the economy is going to take a dip. There is no doubt about that. In fact, it already has affected our GDP. Others need as well. If we stockpile, especially what we do not need, and overstockpile, well, then we might be taking food out of the mouths of those who do not have, and perhaps those who are still be working. Why is it also very good to be realistic? Because we will get through this. There is no doubt that this crisis is going to disrupt and affect many, but we will get through it if we work together. Now, in order to curb the unbalanced actions we see or experience every single day, or even up to now in the videos we've seen, it's been streaming all over social media, why not take a few moments to do a proper budget and see what you can afford first? Try and not buy everything you need on credit. Obviously, this is just going to put you further in debt, and it, the, right, 
light that is coming does not seem very close, especially uh, now after the 21 days and even the weeks and months to come after that. So make a budget. Look for a place where you can get the essentials and stick to those decisions. If you are not prepared, the desire to grab something may be greater when you do not have a budget. And then we might find ourselves uh, even deeper in debt than we were when we started this pandemic. So yes, it is going to be a difficult time. But remember, essential services will still continue. That means certain food stores and shopping centers, or not shopping centers as such, but food stores will be open during this time. Food will still be delivered to those places. So make a list now. Go around and find out which shops will be open in order for you to get bread, milk, all the necessities that you need to continue through the next 21 days. If you can afford it now and you're not going to go into debt, why not go and do some bulk buying, but do not over stockpile. Remember, others out there also need. Then be prepared. Only get the essential items that will sustain you and your family as well as to keep you healthy. So try and be prepared for the next 21 days for healthy living, healthy eating. We do not want to only have junk food in the next coming weeks, uh, just purely because we're on lockdown. We don't want to use this as an excuse to get out of our routine of keeping our families healthy. Why not write down a list of what you already have? So take today, take a few minutes this morning or this evening. The shops are not closing today or tomorrow. They'll probably only start closing as of Thursday or Friday morning after midnight on Thursday. Get the list of what you have. Then you have a realistic picture of what you need. Then check which stores, hospitals, or services are going to be open during shutdown in your area. And keep that list on your fridge, knowing exactly where you need to go should you run out of something specific. Why not also make a list of people around you that you trust and that you can rely on in times of crisis? Now, many of us uh, here in the Hadebeersport area, we've got a few WhatsApp groups, depending on what it's for. And we have a group where the community can send messages about what is actually happening and what's going on. And there's some good help, some good tips, some guidance, advice, support, or assistance that you can get. So why not try and do this as well? All of us need someone to rely on during this time. Some do not have families, and so they'll be isolated on their own. Some have very big families, and so the uh, crisis might come within their own family, you know, being confined for such a long period of time. But remember, if you keep a positive attitude, you are prepared and you are generous, then things will work out for you. So please remember, we will get through this together. On the note of being generous, being generous is not confined to material wealth. So yes, it is possible if you can and you can afford to do it. Why not assist those that you know who have little or no essentials during this time? So ask yourself, are you able to assist somebody in need? Perhaps the gardener that is now going to be going home and in quarantine. The nanny, your childminder or even employees that you personally know at your local school where your children go. Remember, they may not have as much as we do. Are you able to assist? Generosity, though, does not only extend to outside members, but especially to your family. So we encourage you to please be generous with your time and care for them in this difficult time. Constantly panicking, and trying to prepare around ourselves for something that may not happen could also limit your time with your family. So make a good routine now to spend time as a family. And who knows, within 21 days, a routine generally is starting to be set. And this pattern that we work within 21 days can help us to set a routine from now until the future. What about those that you do not know? 
Well, when we stockpile or panic buy and we take too much, what we might be doing is taking food out of people that may not have or may not have the ability to buy right now. So let's leave essential items for those who will be working, especially those who have to work during this 21-day crisis period. Now here's just a little quote, being generous is not confined to material wealth. Be generous with your good character, your expressions. It costs nothing to make a difference because when you smile, it is contagious. So smile, be positive, and on that note, when we want to be positive, we want to ensure that we all realize we will get through this. And that means we just need to be prepared during as well as after this time of crisis. So in the next few days leading up to the lockdown, please keep yourself positive and do not panic. And then we'd like to ask you, what are you going to do during the next 21 day lockdown? Did you know that you can form a routine within 21 days? Yes, not on very big things, but perhaps you wanted to give up smoking. Well, you have 21 days to try it out. Perhaps you wanted to get into a routine of uh, stretching more, doing a little bit more exercise at home. 21 days will certainly give you a very good set routine to be able to start on the right path after these 21 days. What about things that you can do to keep yourself healthy, calm, and positive during the next 21 days? We want to hear from you. Give us this information. We would then like to take the next Toolbox Talk, which is Tuesday coming next week, and then see how all of you are doing uh, a few days into the lockdown, and then give you some ideas of what to do during the rest of the weeks. So really what I'm saying is, let's help each other. And the reason for that is it doesn't cost anything to be positive. It really just takes a little bit of effort on our side to realize that the situation that we are in, although it is in a crisis, we are going to get through it if we work together. So can you suggest some great ideas? Uh, do you perhaps have assistance for those in need? Uh, perhaps you have some books that you want to hand out uh, that people could read. We just want to keep some positive vibes, especially in and around the time that we are living in. So thank you very much for that. We just want to remind you about the postponement of all courses uh, from IOPSA as well as ourselves at OHSS. Obviously, we understand that we still want to get you this training after the crisis has happened. Uh, but during this 21 period, no doubt you will understand that we are going to stop all uh, physical training, so on-site training, but we are there for you online. So if you need any help, please reach out to us, safety at iopsa.org, info at ohss.co.za, or on those two WhatsApp numbers, 067-173-3461, or my personal number, 071-875-2070. Uh, if you want to chat to me, feeling uh, lonely during the time, why not reach out? Send me a WhatsApp. Uh, let's keep in contact and let's keep positive during the next coming weeks. So we want to say thank you very much uh, for joining our Tuesday Morning Toolbox Talks. It would have been very easy for you just to say, well, it's a non-essential item, uh, but you've taken the time out to listen to this and we want to say how much we appreciate that. Uh, for those of you who are working and would still like a safety toolbox talk, why not drop me a message now and I can send you one to do with your um, employees this morning. For those of you who are not going to be uh, working during this 21-day period and you have some information to share with us on lockdown, why not tune in next week Tuesday? For lockdown, it is not all doom and gloom and we can see exactly what we can do to keep ourselves motivated during this time. So thank you very much for joining us this morning, and we're going to hand it over back to you, Sean. All right, perfect. Thanks so much, Chris. We have got quite a few questions, but a lot of them are the same, so I am going to ask them slightly differently so we can cover all of the questions um, or most of the questions at once. The first question reads, water maintenance, does that mean that plumbers can be open, or is that only for the government? So those are very good questions. At this stage, what we have found out is it is basically the provincial government's water supply. Uh, 
Uh, so they will continue to supply water as well as those who are providing power uh, because those are two essentials that we need during this time. At this stage, we have not identified any specific plumbing companies that will need to stay open. However, I do know that certain government institutes have got uh, plumbing companies uh, that are doing maintenance for them. So if you do have any contracts currently or tenders with government departments, what I would suggest is just chatting to them, finding out what um, procedures they have in place for you, uh, because I do understand that some are on standby and some will be working as normal, uh, because there are certain areas where plumbers are desperately needed, and that is because you bring water and life uh, into our homes. So I do certainly hope uh, that many of you are going to be open during this time uh, to keep water flowing in. Unfortunately, I cannot give you an exact list of those companies that will be open or tell you categorically all plumbing companies will be open. Uh, you will have to find out that information from your contracts. Thanks, Sean. All right, perfect. The next question I've got is would would the plumbers be allowed to perform emergency maintenance on say a burst a burst pipe or a burst um uh, main system so this is a, obviously a, a very important question and it's a question i've been trying to figure out the answer to in the past few days uh, purely because we understand what it's like living in a home 21 days things can go wrong and let's say you do have a burst pipe or a burst geezer. At this stage, I don't know if I can pick up the phone and phone my local plumber. I would suggest that we find out which services are open in your area and those who are on standby who have been given authority will probably be the only ones allowed to be on call out. Uh, so what I'm basically saying is if you are a plumber in that area, I doubt at this stage we do not have all the information and I will definitely try and get that for you, whether you are going to be the one that is allowed to take the call out unless you have been pre-approved by the provincial government on that. Uh, so let me do some more research on that for you. I'd love to get that information and give you some good news about uh, keeping money coming in to your company. Thanks, Sean. All right, perfect. So after the session, Chris, I'll send you all of the emails with the, question, with the people asking similar questions. The next question I've got here reads, can I use the 21 day shutdown as annual leave for my employees? So also a very good question. This uh, falls out of the scope of health and safety, obviously. Uh, this is more an HR thing. So you will have to take a look at your basic conditions of employment. Um, it is a crisis or a pandemic, which means it basically overrules um, any and all other acts that are currently out there and government institutes will then force what they view as current legislation. However, if they have not made current legislation, then your acts of basic conditions of employment will continue to be enforced. So what I suggest is maybe reach out to a labor lawyer and rather chat to them. I know if you are an IOPSA member, you do have access to a labor lawyer uh, that can assist you at a discounted rate. If you want that information, I do not have it on hand at the moment, but I can get you that information. Otherwise, if you're working with an accountant that uh, also knows a labor lawyer, I would suggest getting that information from the professionals. Um, I cannot give you an answer on that from a health and safety perspective. It will have to come from the labor or labor department as such. So I'm sorry I cannot answer that question, but I can give you guidance of who to speak to uh, for that question. Thanks, Sean. 100%. Thank you very much, Chris. Well, that is all of the uh, questions we have got for this morning. Would you like to go ahead and end off? Yes, thank you. And thank you very much to you, Sean. I know that uh, during the next few weeks, you're still going to be on standby with us doing these toolbox talks. This is not going to shut us down for the toolbox talk Tuesday morning. We are still going to have our Legionnaires Awareness Month in April. And we are still going to have next week, Tuesday, toolbox talk, uh, lockdown. It's not all doom and gloom. So please reach out to us. We want to be there for you. And if you know any other families, whether they plumbers or not, any person can log into this Tuesday morning toolbox talk. It's something different. Uh, perhaps they'll enjoy what they're listening to and continue to come. It is free of charge. So please uh, give us that information. Reach out to others. And if you can, 
please remain positive, be generous, be prepared, and uh, keep healthy during this time of crisis. Thank you, Sean. 100%. Thank you very much, Chris, uh, for taking the time to prepare the session for us this morning. Guys, as Chris did say, um, I know that Articulated will remain open. We will just be obviously working from home. Um, so you will be able to, these sessions will continue, guys. Don't worry about that. Um, these sessions will continue as well as our evening courses, guys, because again, you can log in from your house and just take these sessions like that. But other than that, guys, I am going to go ahead and end the session off now. Thanks so much to everyone for joining us this morning.